in our series. We are so excited to have everybody here on Facebook Live, and we have a really unique um, conversation ahead for everybody. This morning, I am really excited to welcome Mike Wincup, uh, Phil Wilson, and Chloe Hosfeld uh, to the group. Um, all three of these members have been part of IAPA for a long time, serving on committees, volunteering in many ways, and also with our board of directors. So. What they are bringing today is a unique perspective to the conversation as we all deal with the COVID-19 uh, crisis. IAPA has focused a lot and a lot of the conversations have been on when our properties, facilities, and members will reopen again. But those members who are part of the manufacturers and suppliers side of the business have really unique story to tell too and also have different things that they're facing and, and looking ahead to. So by bringing together uh, Mike and Philip and Chloe, we're able to talk about what's going on in their businesses and how they're preparing to reopen, not just when parks reopen, but also for themselves. So this part, what I'd like to do is just open the floor to you guys and, and Mike, we'll start with you. And, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about what's going on with you guys and, and what you're preparing for um, in these coming days and, and weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us on this morning, Susie. Um, at Galaxy, we make um, indoor parks and attractions. Um, so it's been an interesting transition while we've been locked down here in Florida. And um, we've we've got different projects in various states of completion. So thankfully, they're still ticking along. Um, and that's kind of where we're at, at the moment, trying to get the guys back in the factory and back to work and you know keep the wheels turning. Phil, what's going on with you guys with extreme engineering? Uh, you know, echoing a little bit on 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 Mike. Uh, you know, with with our company, we we build manu we we manufacture uh, roller coasters and also do a lot of engineering design and fabrication for other suppliers in the industry. So as we see our other suppliers kind of navigating through this uh, difficult time on on production to delivery, we're kind of filling a little bit of a little bit of that as well. Um, you know, certainly we've had to adapt uh, to the climate and figure out what are some outlets that we can, you know, fabricate or get into engineering uh, in the meantime, just to keep things moving forward, whether it's amusement related or not. Um, the thing that I've noticed in general in our industry is, is the pure production side of things certainly has slowed down, but the service side i.e. you know working on quotes creative illustrations to master planning those things i've seen ramp up quite a bit i can tell you our engineering service side has actually ramped up quite a bit actually a lot so i think what's going on guys is people are starting to plan and get ready to open when when things do open so i think there's work to be done but the shift is changing and i kind of notice that with a lot of people right now Chloe, what about you? What's going on with everybody at JRA? Um, so I think we're on week seven of being closed. We closed down right after we got back from the IAPA Leadership Summit, actually. Um, and while things in Ohio are phasing reopening, um, JRA is in a big office building downtown and our design studio and marketing team and executive team are all doing as well as can be expected working from home. Um, while we all can't wait to get back in the office, uh, we're a consulting team. So uh, we are able to work from home. So I think what we're gonna be doing is watching and waiting and learning from people as they open up prior to rushing back into the office. Um, a lot of our team are, are uh, parents as well. So we're trying to accommodate um, the safety of their families and the fact that child care is a real issue for a lot of us. So making sure that personally people are being accommodated, not only professionally. So while Phil mentioned uh, a lot of the planning has started to ramp up, um, we are seeing that as well. We're getting contacted by some of our loyal clients. Um, while some of our projects have gone on hold, others have gone gone on, which is great. We're very, very thankful for that. So we continue to answer RFIs, RFPs, and look forward to helping some of our current clients with their reopening. Keeping up a really good point, talking about it's not just returning to work to return to work, but also remembering our employees and your colleagues are at home. They have children, childcare, school is out. Um, 
And, and on the manufacturer supplier side of things, does that make it harder for you guys to return to business, like working with your team? Or do you think maybe it's a little bit easier than a traditional park that has to have employees at a ticket counter or a window or that sort of thing? I can't wait. I would, <laughs> I can't wait to not hug, but want to hug all of our team and see them in the office. And, you know, I, it's great to hang out with Fletch and Eric on a daily basis, but he does really good at daycare and we really like it. So we're hoping they open up pretty soon. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, Chloe touched on, on, on how most of us feel. I mean, this industry, we're full of extroverts, you know, we're, <laughs> We like to be in front of people, hug people, and, and really celebrate each other's success. And so, when you're when you're stuck at home, it, it does tend to tend to be a little challenging. And I could say thank God for social media and, and video conferencing because I was thinking, imagine this happened in 1980. You know, I can only play about 40 minutes of pong. I, I just don't think I could do that forever. But I echo, I echo with Chloe as, as a father of two kids and then my wife also working from home. It, it is hard. Um, but the, the good thing about that, guys, is you get to really spend time together with your family because, you know, we're always on the road. We're always traveling. We're always somewhere. Right now, it's that magic moment where you get to spend a little extra time and, and it's chaotic, but it's also there's some great things out of it, too. So I, I do appreciate it. But certainly on the Chloe's point, I'm ready to go back out there too. So. Right. I'm, I'm glad that we don't have some of the challenges that a park or a public venue has that a lot of our guys are in their own departments and in the factory already and they're already used to wearing protective gear, face masks and things like that. Um, I've had one, I've had my foreman tell me that he's watched some of uh, our YouTube videos just because he misses my voice, which is a little strange, but you know, we're a big family and it's, uh, it's weird being away for so long. When we were preparing for this conversation, uh, you know, one of the things we hear over and over again, and you guys all said it is this is unprecedented. We've never dealt with this before and it's new. And, and Phil, you brought up an interesting analogy the other day. You said that this reminds you a little bit of 9-11. And I thought that was kind of great for this this morning. So if you guys could share a little bit of what you think about that and, and what will things do and look like once we get on the other side of the COVID crisis? Yeah, Susie, thanks. I think when I was talking about the whole analogy 9-11, I mean, you know, obviously these are two very different different crises we're going through, but it's, the, it's not about when we get back to work. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not when we get back to work, it's about how, right? And that's the one thing that I think theme parks and suppliers and just the general public, what is this, what is the how, what is that answer? And, you know, I know everybody from CDC to every state, you know, regulatory to the governor to even our association, IAPA, sent a wonderful guideline out there on, on here's some things to be prepared for reopening. And I think guys, whatever it is, I think it's going to change some of it forever, some of it temporarily. And, you know, don't look at it as, gosh, this is another red tape in my life. Look at it as an opportunity. I think there's going to be things from this guys creatively that all of us can come up with, whether it's a new product, a new service, uh, you know, there's some innovation coming out of these, these breakdown moments. Um, you know, one example, uh, universal, for example, um, they filed a patent on a self-cleaning vehicle. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then there's so much stuff coming out right now on UV technology where people are, are researching on how can you use that to kill bacteria. It's still getting tested. But guys, I think these breakdown moments, there's going to be some huge innovation with breakthroughs when we get through this. So I say, you know, as much as it seems uh, concerning and scary, celebrate and I, the, the things that are going to come out of it. I think it's going to be actually a good thing for a lot of us. <clears throat> Chloe and Mike, would you have anything to add to that? Or, or what do you think too? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, the true impact on the design work that we do is yet to be seen. Um, we don't think it can really be as trivial as queue lines and every third seat being filled, but that's the way that we're going to be able to reopen now. Um, so I think opening this year is going to be very different than planning for the future. And like Phil said, that's a way for us to create new opportunities. 
Um, we were lucky enough to be asked to participate in one of the weekly conversations that uh, the Pennsylvania Association of Parks and Attractions have been having, Pete Barto um, from SNS leads those and he gave me a call. And one of our senior project directors, Randy uh, Smith, joined the call and it was really, really nice to see the conversations between the group going. Um, many of our competitors are looking what other markets to get into outside of entertainment, whether we can show benefits of our knowledge and expertise to things that we never really thought we could partake in. So uh, we're, we're trying to look elsewhere. We're trying to continue to support the entertainment industry though, because this is our bread and butter and what we love to do. So any support that we can have for the operators right now, um, we're, we're here for them. You know, we, if they're not around, we're not around. So as the new opportunities come, we still are, are here for the support of the ones that we've been built on. Yeah, the, the, the changes that we've seen um, or anticipate, um, because we have a foot very much in the indoor family entertainment sector and the party rental industry. So they kind of conflict with each other sometimes. And a big thing that's come up recently is for us labeling and um, just from a, a legal standpoint of maybe warning guests that, you know, although these our attractions are sanitized and we take, you know, cleaning extremely seriously that there is an inherent risk with any surface that you may come into contact with. So um, that's going to be part of our new labeling that, um, which sounds crazy that you've got to explain the obvious, but it's, it's, it's something that as always manufacturers and suppliers that we have to do to protect ourselves is think at the worst case scenario of what somebody could come back with. Um, apart from that, I mean, our, long-term projections in terms of designing has hasn't really changed too much and people are still thankfully people are still pushing ahead and planning for indoor um indoor party venues and and going forward like that so um how we adapt is gonna it's really gonna start to unwrap in the coming months of how things have changed um, and then we're gonna see it implemented going into 2021 yeah, Chloe, I think you brought up a really good point when you say how we are today for reopening is going to be vastly different when how we prepare and what the future looks like. And so it's it's a phased approach. It's very much what we're in now. How are we handling now? How are we preparing for the short term and then looking ahead to the, to the future? Absolutely. We just um, received some information on a potential project um, and we were already seeing the verbiage in the request for information about where the world climate is at this time, but still trying to be optimistic for the future, saying people are gonna have a desire, not only a desire, but a need to get out and be social with other people. It's not just our industry that are a bunch of extroverts. Everybody wants to see each other now. No, I, yeah. We're yeah. seeing that as places are opening people are going right away. Not that that's what everybody should do, but you know, places are going to open and we want the guests and they want to experience socialization. So um, that aspect of the planning is already starting to happen because anybody who's wanting to create a new attraction or facility or museum, whatever it is, they're going to have to, they're going to have to plan that way now. Oh. Yeah. And the tail on, on Chloe's comment, you know, you know, inherently our company are problem solvers. You know, we're a bunch of engineers and we're always looking at, okay, what can we do to, to, to fix the concern and provide a solution that gets people back on track? And, you know, I'm reading some of the feed right here, I live on the side and talking about queuing gates and how disgusting they are and how, how sometimes they're annoying. And, uh, you know, those are one of the things we're actually tackling right now is, is coming up with some innovations with some of our industry friends and partners on distancing people far enough but getting them into the into the park or into the aquarium quick enough so they can still enjoy the day and so again back to that breakthrough comment i made you know this is what comes out of these things is those breakthrough things the other thing too i just uh, i want to echo on chloe is there's been some research done on on being isolated right now and what's going to happen when it opens and they're they're forecasting that credit card debt's going to go through the roof because people don't care if they have a job or not, they're gonna go somewhere. People are already um, booking travel 
some travel agencies have an influx in travel bookings and including um, the cruise line industry have pre bookings sold out to go on cruise ships. So she's right. Everyone's ready. And I think what's going to happen is when we open, it's going to be a scramble for a lot of people in a lot of industries. And I, I, I want to just tell everyone, quit thinking about this as a recession. It feels that way. But I think it's a pause. And I think once this is over, it's going to be recouping and, and recovery and then quickly back to, to getting things out the door, to equipment, to getting people into the park. <clears throat> One of the things we talked about the other day, which I thought the three of you said so eloquently, is everyone's been focusing on social distancing, but really it's about physical distancing. And what you the three of you are talking on and is saying that we're social people and the attractions industry is a social industry. So we know people still want to enjoy the industry and be social with each other. It's the physical distancing that we need to work on. So do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Or I just love the way you guys brought that to light. <laughs> I'm not taking credit for that. That's Jerome. Um, that's Jerome gave it some enlightenment on don't say, uh, you know, physical or say physical distancing, not social distancing. He's dead on. Um, it, it should be called physical distancing, not, not social. Uh, Cause again, we're all very social and, and, I think the challenge with that whole term though, is when you go to a theme park, you're not physical distancing yourself with your family and friends. You want to get up close and personal and experience things together. Um, but yeah, I, again, that term is definitely a better way of saying social distancing in my opinion. Mike, you're laughing. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's right. You know, we're in this industry and we're trying to bring everybody together. And um, certainly some of the, the games and parks that I design you're meant to touch each other and and be very close it's not like a structured roller coaster where you've got your physical barriers between you so um the the physical distancing is going to be a challenge for some indoor facilities going forward and um we've talked in in previous shows about um reduce capacity and things like that but the, the phys changing the language something from so simple to physical instead of social i think is important because um we are an extremely social industry um and we will continue to be so through this it's not going to change one of the things that you i think have even started is you're really the inspiration for even a talk like this today so when the crisis first started mike you actually prompted um, you thought about some way to con continue to connect us and start your own weekly Facebook show. So what inspired you to do that? I know you inspired IAPA to do our own version. So maybe talk a little bit about what you've been doing with that and, and how um, you're continuing to connect with the industry. Yeah, well, we, we started seven weeks ago now doing a weekly um, Facebook Live on the same platform that we're on now. And we as a company established that this wasn't the right time or we asked the question how do you communicate with your customers and get in touch with them because nobody's thinking about buying right now um, and we certainly weren't thinking about selling but with 30 years as a manufacturer we wanted to share our experience on our vast contact book book with all of our customers and and picking specialty people of how we can spread some quality information um, because there's so much garbage out there, to be quite frank. Um, so we've had corporate tax lawyers, we've had insurance professionals, finance companies, and a whole range of manufacturers giving their input on what's how it's affected them, how they see it's going forward, um, and why we're here today. I mean, it's just a case of connecting people and sharing experience so that we all feel a little bit better that we're not in this, um, we're not in this alone, and that people are going through the same or similar kind of struggles. So that's been primarily a marketing effort for us and just still staying connected with our customers and providing a platform for friends in the industry to, you know, to share how they've got through this crisis that's, that's affecting everybody. And, and Chloe, I know you've kind of touched on that too, where um, talking about how this is a global crisis, but everyone is coming together and sharing ideas, whether they're, competitors or colleagues or, or part of the same team. And, and so maybe that's one of the positives that's coming out of all this. I'm, I, you tell me. Absolutely. So, you know, JRA's current focus is obviously 
working and completing the work that we still have, continuing to answer the requests that come in. Um, but mostly it's changing marketing tax tactics. Uh, we're doing our best to stay relevant and seen by our current clients and potential clients. But like Mike said, we don't want to be salesy. That's not, that's not the situation that we're in right now. It is how we make our living, but everybody's hurting right now. We need to make sure that we're thinking about them. So <clears throat> that we are staying current and relevant because of the information that we're getting day to day from our friends, our colleagues, our frenemies. You know, everybody is staying open. Nobody is keeping information. It's um, things are changing daily for everyone. And the only way that we're all going to be able to make this industry survive is by shelling out the information to one another. It's too important to hold on to right now. Um, we always say our biggest competitors are some of our best friends. You know, We hate to lose to them, but we love to sit in the bar with them at the end of the evening. We're lucky that we have such a tight knit group of people in this industry and we wanna to continue to see them throughout the years. So everybody keeps sharing the information as it comes in. Um, you never know what's happening in your state could be happening differently in another one. And it's really, really important to stay relevant. And it's really nice to see each other. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, do you have anything to add with that? I know you you were talking a whole lot about being connective and innovative and, and managing through this storm. Yeah, I, I think Chloe's right. You know, it's it's hard to to sell goods or services and you know i get so annoyed i'm sure everybody on this call listening when you get an email from a company that you didn't even remember signing up for saying what we're doing about COVID 19 we're here to help zero percent interest free of financing you hear all this stuff you're like okay guys so um certainly don't want to go down that path that's the wrong path um the you know it, it's a delicate matter and, and actually some of the good industry friends even chloe i spoke to about this is is what do you do right now? You can't call and sell, you know, master planning and creative net, creative ideas and solutions from like JRA to, you know, Mike, Mike selling, you know, innovative stuff to family entertainment centers to me selling engineering or coasters or, or fabrication. It, it's a really tough thing to offer right now. So talking with some of these people, they say, you know, you just got to listen and, and, and listen to what's going on and just, just be there to understand the challenges they are going through and um, you guys probably, some of you might have heard this before, my saying, and, uh, and I didn't, and by, the, by no means is this my saying, I actually heard this from Megan's friend, and she, she basically made a very good comment about the situation, which was, we're, we're not all in it together, we're actually in the same storm, but we're riding different ships. And the way we're handling this is very different uh, personally and professionally. And that really hit me hard. I'm like, you know, my gosh, because some of us are stay-at-home parents with the kids, some don't have kids, some are family-owned businesses, some are not, some are parks, some are suppliers. And how we're navigating every day through this, this climate is very different. So I, I really think we're not in it together. However, we're dealing with it together, if that makes sense. And I think it's so crucial during this time, guys, that we call each other just to support each other, not sell as much as we need to sell, but not sell and, and, and just listen and understand and actually gain knowledge from each other. Like what Chloe said, we're, you know, uh, checking on your competitors, checking on your, your frenemies, checking on everyone that, that, you know, you can, can understand from and learn from as well. And you giving back as much knowledge as you have to. <clears throat> yeah. It's really important right now, not only on a knowledge base level, but you see all the, messages on TV, the news, everything, check in with your loved ones. Well, this industry, everybody's a loved one. Check in with your friends, make sure you're, they're doing okay. You know, we all want to hear about work all the time, but I think I talk to Phil every other day and it makes me feel better. You know, I'm having a, a bad day and I call him and he's got a kid yelling in the background too. He's trying to answer an email and I'm like, Yes, somebody else is getting to the same life. And everybody is just getting by as best as we can. And, you know, it, 
it is what it is. I'm cautiously optimistic that we're all going to get through it, but it's hard. Um, it's, you know, no sugar coating from us. It's, it's really, it's been a really, really hard seven months. Um, and uh, you just have to make sure we're all there for one another, no matter who they are. Yeah. And the, the different ships in the storm that, that Phil said, I mean, we're all suppliers of different natures, but um, even within like the little subcategory of the party rental industry, I'm concerned about some manufacturers because the the point in the year where this, this broke, they're holding hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars worth of stock and none of their customers are making any money. And it's important. This is important to me that they survive because it's the strength of our industry. Because if, if one goes under, it, it creates a knock on effect and, being there to support another manufacturer and maybe give them some tips either on just on a human level, but you know, from a business point of view, some kind of marketing advice or just financial support. If you've got, if you've got something in your state, a program that it may not exist, you know, I'm in Florida and Phil's in California. I'd still share something that's going on in Florida, just in case there's something similar in California and, you know, with those fr frenemies, that Chloe said, you know, these we're all in this separately together. So it's about maintaining the the integrity of the the industry and making sure that we all pull through this so that we come through it on the other side a lot stronger. Phil, you look so serious. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, the, the kid the, the kids are three three quarter way the kids are three quarter ways to their cereal bowls. I'm just waiting for them to come into the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you know what, Chloe? Yes, uh, Benadryl is okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Phil, I would want to take a moment and just um, give you the opportunity to share how your company has did right now. Um, and I know Extreme Engineering has been making some personal protective equipment for our first responders and those who are working with the COVID. So maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. A great example of not only innovation but pivoting being relevant and frankly helping our community yeah well i think who inspired us quite frankly to do it was it was andy from daniels woodland him doing isolation gowns and 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 seeing what he was doing and we're like you know what what can we do to that level and so we took on shields in fact here's here's our here's our shield <laughs> um and we decided to make a new version for park operators not just for first responders because if you read through the facebook guideline or excuse me, Facebook, we're talking about Facebook. You read through IAPA guidelines and you look at what CDC is coming out with, a lot of the um, public places that are gonna allow uh, the, mass, the mass public coming into um, are gonna require some layered protection. And so we've been getting calls from a lot of our friends at amusement parks going, hey, can you help us with this challenge? And so we tooled up. And what's cool about our, our, our factory in Texas is we have the tools, they just got to be building the different product. And so it was more about adapting and being nimble in the situation we're in to change the tools to make something relevant to, to the, the crisis we're going through right now and provide something that's helpful. Um, so we've, we've been able to get these out pretty quick. Um, never in my lifetime did I think I'd be making PPE um, equipment like Andy. Um, Sure doesn't sound as, as cool and sleek as roller coasters or theming, but you know what? That's what we got to do. And, and part of it, too, allows us to be essential right now in the workforce. Uh, by being able to do these kind of things, we can work. We can keep the factory open. We can keep people employed. And we can get uh, something out that's beneficial to the parks. So. Well, I know there's been a lot of great talk about that through the IAPA industry. <clears throat> community and, and I just want to say thank you guys for doing that and and like you said Daniels Woodland and many other of our members have jumped ahead and been doing something really similar so we we love seeing how innovative um, and responsive our industry is and and I think while it's not your primary goal and we know it's not what you want to do forever it's a great way like you said to continue to move forward and support all of us as we get ready to open so um, what I wanted to ask all of you is that moment of what is it that you want those who are watching and we've had people watching now from Dubai from India we've got people from Indiana Virginia all over the place are listening to the three of you so what is the 
one thing that you hope those who tuned into us today hear from you or, or know um, that you would like to share with everyone? So Mike, why don't we start with you? Oof, talk about springing a question on us. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's just to keep that positive attitude, and um, as our good friend Emily would say, just keep staying funky fresh and really, you know, move forward and know that this is going to end, and that um, just position yourself in a way that you can come on the other side because you know the earth is still spinning, and I don't mean to make light of you know this is a huge health concern, but. Um, we're managing it and we're getting through it and do do the best you can and whatever that is, is good enough. Chloe? Um, I can't wait to see you guys. <laughs> Literally cannot wait to see you guys. Stay positive, stay there for one another. Um, yeah, I, first thing that comes to mind is I cannot wait to come and see <laughs> every single one of you. And take care of one another, yeah. Phil, we're going to land uh, on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Closing statement. Um, no, I would just say, guys, that, you know, right now it's so important to, to look at everything in your life as a breakthrough right now. If you're healthy, you know, be thankful for that. Um, if you're, you know, at home with your wife and your, your husband and your kids or whoever you're with, you know, give them a hug today. Um, these are magic times as well as they are dim and grim times they feel like but at the end of the day guys uh, do yourself a favor don't watch the news every day nice. and focus on things that are positive in your life and, and if it does seem like the, the world's gonna end it's not um, you know this association's been around for a hundred years they've seen so many crazy things that we've been through and this is just another crazy thing that we're also gonna get through guys so if anything, guys, I just want to encourage everybody watching, everyone on this call with us. Um, but yeah, this is this is something we're we're definitely gonna. It's gonna challenge us, but we're gonna be much stronger and more prepared for the next thing that comes. It, it's it's like hitting the gym. It's like Chloe on her Peloton every morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I want one, Chloe. I'm still gonna get one. Um, and you know, when you go on, when you go to the gym, the hardest part going to the gym is what getting there but once you get in and you accomplish that goal and you get out you feel stronger so treat this like a workout in a way and that sounds silly but it's challenging us mentally and and physically and as we get through those challenges you're going to be stronger you really are you know yeah i couldn't well, agree with that more phil i think um now's the time and we're doing this to stay connected um and if you're making the connections now and rebuilding those relationships it's it's what you do how you deal with this now is what's going to define you a few months few years down the line and those building blocks like you said about the gym so get your work in now and we'll push through I guess now we all need a peloton <laughs> Hey, Chloe and Phil, thank you so much for joining us on Cinco de Mayo, as we all joked earlier. So cheers to you and, oh. and to our oh. oh. yeah, There he is. Yay. Cheers to you and to our IAPA family and everybody. We really appreciate you sharing your time and insight with us and can't wait to see you again. Yes, buddy. Have a margarita. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Yeah, it's funky for margarita. That's we're gonna have to <laughs> trademark that. So thank you all for tuning in for this week's IAPA webinar. Um, you can follow us for all of our updates on COVID resources at iapa.org backslash COVID-19 and continue to check out our Facebook page. So thank you all very much. Have a great day. Bye guys. Thanks, thank guys. you. Take care.